Michael, my dude, what's up? So, I'm back with you today in the continuing quest to get through all of these movies that I buy and put on this shelf and just don't watch, trying to remedy that. This week I got through four more movies. Three of them were pretty darn good. One of them was just okay. But these are the horrors I've seen. That one felt flat, like it didn't have enough oomph to it. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Are you ready? As always, I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe. All right, so the first thing that I watched, nope, I got these in the wrong order. The first thing that I watched this week was The Haunting, back with my glare, The Haunting of Molly Hartley. So, at the opening of the video, I said that there was one that was just all right, and that one for me was The Haunting of Molly Hartley. This movie begins with a woman giving birth. The kid is dies at childbirth, or is stillborn, or is dying at childbirth. My memory ain't so good. And in order to save the baby, the woman makes a deal with the devil and sells the baby's soul. And at 18, the, the devil now is going to take ownership of this child or some kind of shit's going to hit the fan on her 18th birthday. So the whole movie, you're dealing with this girl who is sub-18. Shit keeps happening to her. She's seeing things. She's seeing her mother. Her mother's in a mental ward. Her father's raising her by himself. But she keeps seeing her mother. Her mother's continuously trying to kill her. So you, the whole movie, you're trying to figure out who the enemy is or who the enemy isn't. And you come to find out that there, there, there's a whole bunch of people in on this. It's not just her mom and her dad. It's There's a lot more involvement here. So it, it, this movie, it was all right. I mean, it wasn't fantastic, but it didn't completely suck. But of the four movies I watched this week, this was... This was this one was the clunker. I, I don't know. I got to the end of this movie. Like I said, it was okay. I'm stammering a lot about this. I'm trying to trying to give you some good here. It was all right. I, I mean, it was kind of it was compelling. I, I I wasn't bored watching this movie, but I always felt like I was waiting for something to happen, something definitive, so you at least know what's going on. The end of the movie comes. And it all ties together. You get a good sense of what the hell you just watched. But you, I, I still felt kind of empty at the end of this movie. I definitely hoped for much more. The only familiar faces that I had in this movie, there was a couple of them. There was a girl in here that was one of her classmates that was sort of the, the daughter-in-law on Raising Hope. She was in here. The guy, like your main good guy character in the remake of Dawn of the Dead, he was in here. And there was another girl in here. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie Excision. Very, I mean, it's not the most popular movie in the world, but it's pretty fantastic. So the main character in Excision was also in this movie. The girl who played Molly Hartley, I never saw her before. She looked kind of familiar. Maybe I've seen her, maybe I haven't. I definitely don't care whether I have or haven't. This movie was just all right for me. I definitely would not say don't watch it. I mean, how many girls dying at birth and then the devil comes to steal your soul at your 18th birthday movies do you get a chance to watch? So if you're into that sort of thing, watch The Haunting of uh, Molly Hartley. It was just okay for me. The second movie I watched this week was definitely the biggest surprise of the week for me. I picked up this movie and got ready to watch it. And before I even put it in my DVD player, I had the idea in my head that this movie was not going to be good. I was very, very wrong. The movie is, Mr. Glare, The Final Girls. The only familiar face in this movie for me is Vera Farmiga's daughter is the main character in this. Is it Tessa? T-A-I-S-S-A, -S -S Farmiga. Vera Farmiga, you know her from, she's in the, the Conjuring universe, and she was uh, the ba in the Bates Motel. Everybody that's a horror fan knows who Vera Farmiga is, and her daughter is the main character of this movie. That is a film about 
the, the Vera Farmiga's daughter, Tessa Farmiga's mom, was in an 80s horror film. I think it was called Camp Bloodbath. Maybe it was. I think it was. Maybe it wasn't. Watch the movie and you'll know for sure. Or look it up on that thing called the internet. She was in this old 80s slasher movie. The movie kind of stuck with her. She kind of regretted ever doing this movie, so on and so forth. Something happens and she passes away. The mom passes away. The daughter does not. They're in a car accident. I don't know why I'm acting like that's a secret. They're in a car accident. Mom dies, daughter doesn't die, jumps ahead three years later, and the local movie theater is playing a screening of Camp Bloodbath. The daughter goes to this movie with her friends. After an odd series of events, which I'm not going to get into, the movie theater catches on fire. They find out that there's an exit behind the movie screen. They jump up, get they bust through them well they cut through the movie screen to go towards that exit and what they've actually done is they have now managed to enter the film itself so now they're stuck in the 90 minute film of camp bloodbath they're in the movie so she's in the movie with her mom and she's either older than or as old as her mom in the movie it's weird but very, very good. Absolutely the biggest surprise for me of the week. Like I said, just looking at this, if that doesn't not, if that, this is a perfect example, I guess, of don't judge a book by its cover, or in this case, a, a movie by its cover, especially one you bought at Dollar Tree. If that does not look like a movie that's really fucking stupid, then I have no idea what that actually looks like. But it was not. It was <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to watching that again. I watched it by myself uh, last week, and I'm going to watch that again with my wife. I think my wife will really enjoy that movie. It's got, like, all of the 80s slasher tropes in it. It's got, like, the goofy guy and the druggy stuff. And the, it's really, really good as far as that slasher, you know, encompassing the slasher genre goes. And it's also really good at making fun of it. And the underlying story of that girl and her mother, or the mother and daughter, however you want to put that, is very, very good. It jerks at your heartstrings. It's, you want to know how they're going to get out of this. It's, I, I can't say enough good things about the final girls. I know that I very recently saw this DVD in Dollar Tree. I bought this probably a year ago or more. I know very recently I saw it. So that, there are definitely copies of that still floating around in Dollar Tree. So if you're compelled to spend one dollar, Dollar Tree's increased to a a dollar twenty-five now, so it's like a buck twenty-five tree. If you want to spend a dollar twenty-five to find a really fantastic movie, get the Final Girls. You won't regret it. That movie was friggin' badass, awesome. The next thing that I watched was not a first-time watch for me. Was Lake Eden or the the title? 1490s, was it 96? 1499. That's the name of this film. Christ. Eden Lake. This was back when Dimension was putting out their Dimension Extreme line, where everything was supposed to be, it's kind of in the word, extreme. This one I watched probably four, five, six years ago, if not even more. And it's pretty brutal. There, It's... A husband, well, not a husband and a wife, because that's part of the storyline. A guy, a boyfriend and a girlfriend go off to some secluded lake somewhere just to spend a nice romantic e uh, evening, a nice romantic weekend together. And his intention is to propose to her. I, I almost engage to her. Well, he wants to engage with her as well, but he wants to propose to her that weekend. They go down to this lake, they, they set up camp, they're laying out, and all of a sudden you see a pack of teenagers come in loud radio barking dog darks dogs annoying the the girl when she's laying out in the sun he goes out in the lake the kids mess with her he comes back goes to the kids tries to get him to turn the radio down the kids are dicks as a lot of teenagers are i tell you what one thing that this movie will definitely make you do is really really dislike teenagers well i guess drug addled drunken teenagers that are pricks anyway not some teenagers are all right anyway 
These kids are like the most horrible kids that you could possibly come across in your life. So I'm not going to get into everything that happens in this movie for sure. So, all right, we're going to simmer this down. Boyfriend, girlfriend, go to a lake, go out there, try to be romantic. It ain't so rom romantic when you got a dog and a radio and a bunch of fucked up kids bothering you. That movie is also something that will tug at your heartstrings. It's definitely, I don't know if I'd call it extreme because I've seen things, that, I've seen a Serbian film and I've seen Martyrs and I've watched The Sadness and they're, August Underground. Those are extreme. This ain't extreme. It's pretty intense. It's pretty hard to watch at certain points. Extreme is a bit much. But what it definitely is, it's not extreme, but it is a fantastic movie. Very well made. It, very convincing. You feel for these two people in this movie so much. That's disgusting. But the movie was not disgusting. Well, the teenagers were disgusting. Awesome movie. I don't know if you can... Well, I've said this before, too. You're definitely not going to find this in a store at this point. But there's a thing called Amazon. You can definitely find it there. If you haven't seen good old 1499... This movie is absolutely positively worth getting and watching if you haven't seen it. If you have seen it, I have no doubt that you understand what I mean when I say teenagers are dicks. All right, and the last thing that I watched this week was the remake of George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. This movie was made by Tom Savini, and it was starring Tony Todd. He... He was the big name that was in this movie. He was not the star of the movie, but he was a star of the movie. Well, I guess he shared the spotlight with another character, the, the woman that was in it. Uh, Bill Mosley's in this movie, too, at the very beginning. He's the, they're coming to get you, Barbara. The guy who gets killed in the cemetery, it's Bill Mosley. Very, very cool, man. I'll tell you what, of, of the remakes out there, of the, of the 27,000 remakes that have been made over the last couple of decades... That's one of the good ones. Tom Savini paid homage to George Romero perfectly. Fantastic. Great cast. Great story. I mean, there are differences in the movie, but it's it's generally the same thing as Night of the Living Dead. I'm going to go ahead and assume that most of you have seen this, and I've seen it too. I've seen it a few times, but it's been a while, and I'm trying to get through all of this stuff. So that guy's turn came up this time. Tom Savini is a legend, and he's a legend for damn good reason, because the guy just produces fans, fantastic stuff. He, I believe he directed this. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty damn positive he directed this. Like, clearly, he was re responsible for all of the effects in the movie. Tom Savini's not going to hire somebody else that is, doesn't work for Tom Savini, because that would be weird. But very good movie. I don't have to explain that to you. It's like the first zombie movie. Real, well, not... I think, you know, the first, it was like the birth of the modern zombie movie was George Romero's Night of the Living Dead. And this is just a rehashing of that. So if you've seen Night of the Living Dead, you've already seen this movie. This one's just a little bit different, but it's equally great. I don't know which one I would say I like more because I, I'm a big Tony Todd guy. So that already tips the scales in the favor of the remake just because he's in it. But the other one is just an absolute classic that we, as horror fans, should all tip our cap to. George Romero is a legend for a reason, and that's the movie that put him on the map. And it's made in Pittsburgh, too, so that's kind of cool. Steeler country. Whatever. I'm getting out of here. Whatever. All right, so uh, the clunker of the week for me, goes without saying, was The Haunting of Molly Hartley. And honestly, the best movie that I watched this week, Lake Eden. Or Eden Lake. Like, why don't we call it Lake Eden? Probably a Lake Erie. Want to keep the, calling that Lake Eden all the time. Eden Lake is a great, great movie. But I'll tell you what, The Final Girls was definitely the best movie I watched this week. I can't, like I said, I can't say enough good things about that movie. If you come across that thing, buy it. Especially if it's a Dollar Tree, because you got to be able to set off and or, or, or separate yourself from a dollar and a quarter to watch a great movie, right? You got to. All right, I'm getting out of here. Let me know down in the comment section if you've seen all of or any of those movies. And if you've seen F The Final Girls, let me know if you felt the same way about that movie. I love that movie. I, I, it was wonderful. All right, now I am getting out of here. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really like this video and you've been enjoying my content up to this point, please do me a huge personal favor. Click that subscribe button and ring that 
bell. Talked a lot this time around. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day. Thank you for watching, folks. See you in the next one.